66% of United States residents, public water is fluoridated. It is known to have tremendous effects on bone cancer, joint problems, bone weakness, lowered estrogen and testosterone levels, and dental fluorosis, which is yellowing of the teeth and pitting in the enamel. Wouldn't it make more sense to enhance public water with vitamins, which are meant to be ingested, to promote overall health? Rather than putting such a toxic chemical in our water with a bogus explanation that it will improve our dental health. We now know that fluoride causes more dental problems than it solves. Something doesn't seem right about this. Do you honestly believe that these companies care deeply enough for the people to spend large amounts of their own money to fluoridate public water when the people already purchased their own toothpaste? But there's a difference between toothpaste and drinking water. We don't ingest toothpaste. If you go to any hardware store and look at any rat poison product, you will only find one ingredient, sodium fluoride. It is the most toxic ionic molecule outside of potassium dichromate. Now Danon, along with other companies, have begun fluoridating bottled water. It is becoming increasingly difficult to get away from. And the fact that fluoride is also used in many prescription antidepressants shows that it eliminates aggression and motivation in people. Fluoride, to my knowledge as a physician, has absolutely no biological benefit whatsoever. Uh, but one of the significant things is that the, the Russians uh, carried out all sorts of experiments on the uh, people living in the Gulag. One of them, of course, was to fluoridate the water. Why? You fluoridate the water, why people are not uh, as aggressive as they ordinarily would be. In fact, what is the active ingredient in Prozac that is so widely distributed in America today? Why, it's a fluoride compound. And now, we are finding that public water nationwide is showing up with arsenic, lead, cadmium, and thermonium, which is a radioactive form of lead. Cancer, lowered sex drive, birth defects, sedation, and brain defects. Does this not sound like a wonder drug for anyone aiming to control a population? It's, it's quite astonishing, Paul, uh, the degree to which environmentalists have not been educated about fluoride. You know, people have an unconscious trust in their doctor or their dentist. And if you can persuade doctors and dentists that fluoride is safe and good, then you're, you're, you're uh, able to reach the rest of the nation. People believe they're doctors and dentists, and that was a way of promoting fluoride for Bernays. Fluoride was killing their cattle, destroying their crops. Uh, fluoride given to rats had produced bone cancer and liver cancer, and that those results had been doctored to make it look as though fluoride hadn't caused as much cancer. The pattern that we saw it typically is what we see with other neurotoxic agents that are well known to cause a hypoactivity or uh, a memory problem or an IQ problem. When I first presented the results of these studies, um, one of the uh, individuals sitting and listening to the results, he says, do you have any idea what you're saying? And he says, you're telling us that we're reducing the IQ of children. And basically I said, yes. Aspartame, the artificial sweetener found in almost every low sugar or sugar free product on the market. First of all, aspartame is made up of three things methanol, which of course is what produces blindness, uh, aspartic acid, and, and phenylalanine. These are all poisons. Aspartic acid, of course, produces brain lesions. Uh, this was known back in the early 1970s. Methanol produces blindness. Phenylalanine is what you see uh, certain uh, in the brain, and, and in high doses, it produces trauma. We're not making this all up. The FDA did publish. Back in, um, I think it was in the 80s, they did publish the 92 potential side effects of aspartame. And they do, you know, these side effects are 
quite, you know, are extremely serious. Things like dizziness, uh, problems with balance, uh, abdominal pain and cramps, changes in vision, seizures and convulsions, etc., uh, etc. Et Yet despite all of these harmful effects, Donald Rumsfeld pushed it out into the stores in over 5,000 products when he was CEO of Searly, the company that manufactured aspartame. The sustainable goal is the elimination of the middle class. The world cannot support six billion people. But you see, the plan behind sustainable development includes population control. It's a program for land use control, education control, and population control. The leaders of the sustainable movement say that the world's human population should not exceed 500 million people. That's a 93% reduction of today's population levels. In 1992, while the Rio conference was going on, George Bush, then president, was there. He was just offshore in Prince Charles's yacht, where he executed the Agenda 21 protocols on behalf of the United States and brought it back to Washington, D.C. Within a year, Bill Clinton, by executive order, established the President's Council for Sustainable Development. In 1996, Bill Clinton set up the President's Council on Sustainable Development, one of the dictates of Agenda 21 is that every country in the world is to set up a national council to oversee the implementation of Agenda 21. I've listened to Gorbachev explain, we are writing a new set of 10 or 15 commandments to replace the original 10. Which one of the 10 do you think these guys don't like? Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. Because I'll tell you what, these people have lied to us. They're in the process of stealing all of this nation's natural resources, and they covet everything you have left. To explain the map, the red are areas that are to be off limits to human beings. If you live there, you won't. The yellow areas are the areas for major control of all human activity. If you live there, you won't. The black dots are the smart growth zones. That's where human beings are to be stacked and packed in small living units along rail tracks. The smart growth program ultimately has jobs assigned and children cared for by the state. And in conjunction with Codex Alimentarius, food will be limited and water consumption will be decreased to 10 gallons per day per person. That is over a 90% reduction in people's average daily water consumption. And along with shortages of food and water, the food we will be provided with will be genetically manipulated and nutrient deficient. Genetic manipulation of food causes complications in metabolizing and utilizing food for energy. In June of 2003, scientists reported that the gene sequence of the inserted genes into, into crops had actually changed their order. They had re-scrambled. So the genetic inserts are not stable. Another laboratory confirmed this and found that it had changed in the same varieties in different ways that they had tested. So not only is it unstable and changing, it's not even uniform in the way it's changing. This is incredibly dangerous. Nutrient deficiencies due to Codex's planned vitamin and mineral ban will cause billions of preventable diseases. Both of these will ultimately lead to billions of deaths 